Hey, how's it going? We're in the next part now. I'm busy talking about the holiness, not the holiness. Yes, indeed, the holiness without which no one will see God. But in the previous part, please go check it out to gauge your bearings. I was speaking about how as the human race of Christians, we have got to try very hard to wait. Um, albeit everything falling apart, because we naturally gravitate towards instant relief, instant gratification, reprieve, we, when we're going through a lot in our environments, uh, can then be tempted to say, God, just take us out of here already. But literally the whole body of Christ has got to long. It's holy. It's righteous. It is what God wants us to do. We have got to long that he rather stay his hand from effecting the great tribulation as opposed to just vomit it in the interest, okay, of rescuing people from getting in there. Now, guys, it is obvious, it is clear, it is like all up in your grizzled, all right, that people struggle to do what is right when put under pressure. The reason why the devil makes your life such a wicked nightmare, uh, when you, so such a wicked nightmare and puts you in such dire straits when you are trying to serve God is because when you are in dire straits and in a nightmarish ecosystem, that is when you are most likely to compromise. That is when you are most likely to forget about God because the world does not understand how the spiritual atmosphere works. It is very quick to bash its fists against a holy God when stuff goes down on the ground. That's why so many people upon observing famine in certain lands and kids suffering from malnutrition and Earthquakes ravaging homes, floods taking away uh, people's entire inheritances. They are quick to say, where was God in all this? The devil literally uses catastrophe and desire, disaster to feed the flesh of mankind in causing them to rebel against God. Because if God is so good, why is there so much darkness in the world? Why are all these things going on? And mankind ceases to recognize in so lamenting against God that you brought about the calamity on your own ecosystems. It is your unrighteousness, your unholiness, your fallen state that has domino effect ransacked the whole earth. The book of Revelation, it is written that God is going to destroy those who destroy the earth. It is literally the culmination of God's wrath all throughout the ages that caused uh, your worlds, your environments to fall apart. And yet you will have blamed it on God. God's instructions are very clear. In the book of First Peter, if anybody longs to love their life, if anybody wants to, lo lo wants to love their life and see good days, they must stay away from evil. They must keep their tongue from speaking deceit. They must basically be good peoples. And if you're good peoples, you will likely be good to your next door neighbor. And if you're good to your next door neighbor, your next door neighbor will likely not think God sucks. And so they will be more at ease and chill. And so the whole earth domino effects with good life and good days. But you're the mean one. You're the gangster that keeps on plucking the hairs out of your next door neighbor's newborn baby. And so because you cause all that aggravation in that environment, domino effect down the line, that newborn baby is a serial killer 20 years later. There are cause and effects, causality and causation, sorry, that causes, that makes out, you know, ultimate realities or eventualities in the future that you wag your head at, like in disdain, really, frankly, uh, thinking that you had nothing to do with it. Your wicked deeds today have a literally butterfly effect, like, you know, chaos theory it has it like the, um, it, a butterfly flapping its wings, and wings, sorry, in one part of the world can cause an entire like earthquake or some natural disaster in a far away distance. You are the butterfly effect as human beings. You might not be able to observe in your own immediate environment what chaos you have caused 10,000 miles away from where you're at. And one day you're going to learn because at the great white throne judgment, God is going to, I believe, show people the ripple effects of what they did, not only in their lifetime, but all throughout the course of history, that one deed you did, what it meant for a hundred years down the line from that particular date. And so you're going to realize the pomp and the arrogance of saying when there is an earthquake in one particular section of your country that stole, that took an entire family's like livelihood when you are at that moment being like, if there is God, why would all of this be happening? And you're going to be made to understand that you did that, not God. You, your sin, mankind, is what has literally been the waterfall effect that has destroyed this entire planet. You literally have everything to do with the destruction of this earth. The, the lands would be better off. Creation groans to see the sons of God revealed because we subject it to futility. Creation is observes what we do our dishonor of Jesus and essentially in its 
stationary state wags its proverbial head at what we do because we are dark and we ripple things down into ecosystems that we don't recognize we had anything to do with it. And the Lord has made that clear throughout the scriptures as to cause and effect for why it is that so much calamity falls on the ground. It is not just a haphazard, power thirsty, megalomaniacal God wanting to show people just how big he is. You're wanting to show people just how powerful he is. And if you don't do this, I'm going to roar because I'm the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not like that. That's not his character. Do you understand? He might be huge, gargantuan in comparison to us, but he's very gentle and loving and serving of these little minions on the ground. They are his creation. He loves them. So he's not just going to calamitize them unless they had it coming. Literally, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. However, he will not leave any sin unpunished. So the Lord gives justice in any ecosystem where there is none. And that justice sometimes looks like earthquakes in your countries. It sometimes looks like floods. It sometimes looks like the death of children. It sometimes looks like what it is that you are very heavily tempted every single day of your life to say, there is obviously no God. There is obviously uh, no God. So as the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have got a responsibility to try and help people see that they are responsible for the destruction of their countries. And God is precisely good. That is why there is so much disaster in in our lands. Because if he wasn't good, there would be no disaster for he would not be effecting justice. You don't want sin to go unpunished. And so for those reasons, you got to recognize the darkness from within yourself and repent. Give your life over to Jesus, that you might be absolved from ramification management in eternity, that you might not have to pay for the domino effect that caused the hurricane in a different land that you think you had nothing to do with. You need to give your lives over to the Lord. So we have got to show in in, in an ever like uh, falling apart, cracking up world, we have got to show people their play in it, their contribution to it, that they might see how in trouble they are in the hands of a holy, righteous God. Sin is in the hands of a righteous God. You don't want that. And so to cause them to repent, they've literally got to recognize that their countries are in shambles because of them. And that their countries are not in shambles because God is so far away and could not kill us to help out. Their nations have fallen apart because of them. Having laid that groundwork, I want you, I'm going to tell you, sorry, my dreams and not just my dreams, but what God is doing in my country and how far we have fallen and what has caused it. And in this fallen state that we are in, there are a whole bunch of South Africans that are like, where is God? Where is the most high? Where is the all powerful dude? Where is he? And I'm like, he's all over. And you see that he's all over because he has obviously judged your land for wickedness. God is in judgment, but he's also in mercy. And so when your country's falling apart, it's not that he's not there. It's that he's so there that he's effecting justice. And so if God is effecting justice, you must recognize that he has reached the pinnacle of his patience. And so you are in dire straits. You are at that point where if you don't repent now, you will see what God's final wrath looks like since you've seen the very beginnings of it. You have seen the pin drop in the ocean of it. You have seen the the flicker of it in a far distance. This is nothing in comparison to what is coming your way. And as the body of Christ, we have a responsibility to help people recognize that you're still alive, you're still here. The rapture has not yet happened. You who laugh at the church, you keep on speculating on the fact that the rapture is at hand. Because God is currently still slow to anger and staying his hand from wrath, but you're so far gone and way deep into this calamitous state that you are in, that your countries are essentially being rendered worthless. Meaning that in two seconds from now, given that God is not going to punish the righteous and the unrighteous all in one big fat batch, he's ultimately going to take the righteous out because they can't be made to be subjugated to the tyranny of everybody's insanity when they try to snatch you out from the flames of hell. So repent that the righteous might be able to live among you because right now you've made their lands insufferable or perish, however, with the righteous being nowhere to be found amidst you. Next part.